Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, training programs, technical schools, skill trade professions, employment opportunities, career exploration, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Kirchin, your host, and today we will be speaking with Lansing Community College and learning about all of their wonderful programs and how to get set up and enrolled in their program. Welcome, Michael. We are so glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the invite and I'm happy to be here and uh, thankful for the opportunity. Good deal. Good deal. You want me to just jump in? Are we? Go ahead. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so good afternoon uh, again, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Mike and my official role at Lansing Community College is student engagement coordinator. Uh, one of my primary responsibilities is working with students as they um, transition to the college and to the point where they get registered for classes. So a lot of what I um, will talk about is how students get started, um, whether that's someone who is fresh out of high school, maybe um, the parent of someone who's fresh out of high school who wants to also go back, uh, or maybe somebody who's just looking for a career change um, and interested in, in learning a new skill or, or uh, uh, earning some type of new academic credential. Lansing Community College has been around since 1957. Um, we currently have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 215 different degree and certificate programs. Um, all of our degrees are the associate degree, and you can earn from LCC either a certificate of achievement or a certificate of completion. And some fields may have all three, and which one you go for kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, between all programs, there's two things that absolutely every one of our certificates and degrees does, and that is prepare students with the knowledge needed to um, go out and get a job and what's needed to go on and take that next step to the four-year college or university. So um, all of our associate degrees um, include gen ed coursework, um, most of which is applicable to the Michigan Transfer Agreement. And then we have some certificate programs for people who maybe just wanna come in and learn one specific thing. Uh, welding, for example. Um, you wanna come in and you wanna take the classes only related to welding. So you can get that welding certification, go out and get the job. Um, versus someone who might want the associate's degree who's going to learn that same knowledge, but also take the gen ed course stuff, the writing, the um, uh, communications course, the science, things like that, that they can also build off of that to go on and get that bachelor's degree. Uh, we have a couple different campuses. Our main is in downtown Lansing. Um, we're about two or three blocks from the Capitol building. Um, we've got a uh, West Campus that's about 15 minutes west of downtown, and that's home to all of our career and technical education programs. So for students who are interested in the welding, the auto body, the robotics, advanced machinery, uh, perhaps our police academy, fire academy, um, mechatronics, building construction, um, things of that nature, most of those classes are held at our West Campus. Um, and then we also have a campus um, in East Lansing, uh, our East Campus building, and a campus in Howell, um, where we have um, remote locations for classrooms for people who are maybe closer to those geographic locations versus going all the way to downtown. Um, we have uh, all kinds of different academic majors, um, whether you're interested in um, biology, chemistry, accounting, um, dental hygiene, massage therapy, phlebotomy, nursing, music, performing arts, um, or some of those trade programs I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we also have in Mason, Michigan, which is a little bit south of us, we have an aviation maintenance technology program at the Mason Airport, where we have students who are learning um, the uh, A&P mechanics license trade um, and can also graduate with an FAA license um, through the Federal Aviation Administration to be able to work on airplanes, fix engines, small engine repair, things of that nature. So um, we are a great place, whether you're someone who, like I said, wants to come in and only learn a skill that's gonna help you go out and immediately get a job and get paid, or if you're someone who wants to learn that skill in addition to your core coursework, 
uh, to prepare yourself to go on to the bigger four-year school, the university, whatever it might be. Um, we have programs in place um, for almost everyone. We've also got on our campus uh, in downtown Lansing, a building called the University Center, uh, where we have Central Michigan University, Siena Heights University, Northwood, Ferris State, and U of M Flint all have branch locations on our campus for students who can complete their bachelor degree in Lansing with us through that school. Um, most of them are a three plus one partnership, meaning three years of courses at LCC, transfer into that final year at the university uh, and some are two plus two. Um, so when we look at someone who might be interested in, let's say healthcare management, for example, um, it's a great opportunity for them to come to LCC, study at the community college for three years, pay the cost of college at LCC for three years and know from almost day one everything they're gonna take over the next three years that's gonna transfer them into the University of Michigan Flint on our campus uh, and complete that last year um, through U of M Flint, but in Lansing with us and still earn their bachelor's degree in uh, healthcare management. So um, it's a great opportunity for people who want the four-year college, the big, you know, I always say the big school experience, but they wanna do it close to home staying at home, uh, you know, without moving away, um, but still studying, uh, you know, at that four-year level. You can still earn associate degrees with LCC, you can still earn certificates, and you will receive your bachelor's degree from that school. And one thing I always tell people, too, is no matter where you go next, whether it's, uh, you know, the University of Texas, the University of Michigan, wherever, uh, you can still start with LCC and you can still get there. You're not going to get a diploma from that school that says Bachelor of Arts in, you know, photography, but also went to a community college. You're still earning that school's degree and LCC coursework prepares you to get to that next level um, and do it in a much more fiscally responsible way, um, knowing that uh, financial aid and cost is very, very important. Um, I've been working in higher ed for about 15 years now. And unfortunately it's, it has not gone down, I don't think once. Every year there's a little bit of a increase price by price by price. Um, and a lot of times financial aid does not uh, always increase with that. So we have students paying outrageous prices at some schools, um, but their amount of financial aid they're eligible for still remaining the same. So I always encourage students to not look at uh, how you're going to get through the first year, but map out your entire degree and take a look at how much financial aid is eligible, or excuse me, uh, available to you, and how that equates to four years, and really kind of do the comparison of uh, the benefits of a couple years at a community college, perhaps even one year at a community college um, at that lower rate, um, and being able to see how that um, cost effectiveness can really, really help you down the road. So, um, one thing I think LCC does perhaps better than, than many. Um, I've, I've been around uh, most community colleges and I can honestly say that I think we provide better student services than a lot of places. Um, every student that applies at LCC will get assigned an academic success coach, someone who will reach out to them and say, um, Tony, hi, my name's Mike, I'm your success coach. I'm just introducing myself and telling you how I can help you. Um, that might be with things like budgeting your money, um, time management, test preparation, um, how to just quite frankly adjust to being a college student and what the demand is in terms of in-class work versus out-of-class work and um, really kind of just coach you through the process of being a college student. Um, their job relies on your success as a student. So I always tell people their, their sole responsibility is to make you successful. And what I need versus what you need versus what the person next to you needs is all different. And that's the great thing about our success coaching program is they can provide a variety of services depending on what you specifically need. Um, we're not gonna meet you where we think you are, we're gonna meet you right where you're at. And if the first thing you need from us is, you know, help with technology, then we have ways of helping you with technology. Our, uh, our library has uh, roughly a thousand laptops that students can check out um, just like uh, you would a book. Um, when we first went into remote operations, um, we had a, uh, uh, a stockpile of, um, I think you call them little like hotspot 
connectors or something because quite frankly, internet was a barrier for a lot of students and here we are pushing them to having to go remote all of a sudden. So um, we had those things available. Um, we've got tutors for every subject for every class all day, every day, uh, whether it's via WebEx or Skype or um, a, a service we have that's available 24 hours a day. Um, we've got what you need and if we don't have it and it's a um, accommodation need, we'll get it for you. Um, that's just kind of how we do it and what we try to do and um, whether it's a um, student access consultant, an academic success coach, myself as a student engagement coordinator, we've got all kinds of different student service areas. Um, but the one centralized focus for all of us is making sure our students are successful. So we're not going to be out there trying to do what we can do to make our area look good. Um, everything all of us do is all about you as the student. And we try to bring that every single day and make sure, you know, we're looking out for our students needs, whether it's um, hunger needs or whether it's technology needs or whether it's, um, you know, uh, financial needs, you know, there's, there's always something we can try to do. Um, and I will confidently say that LCC has done a tremendous job over the past five to six years of, of really bringing that front and center and making the student the focal point of what we do and why we do things. Um, do colleges still offer student handbooks? Um, like a planner, like a small little like day-to-day -day planner, is that? No, what you mean by um, when I went to college and let's mm -hmm. not talk about how long ago that was, I was given a student handbook when yes. I first enrolled. And so I could look to see how many college credits I needed for my degree how many credits in this and how many credits in this, you yes. know, yes. because I didn't want to rely on somebody else doing it for me, my advisor doing it for me. I wanted to dot my I's and cross my T's and figure it out myself. Sure. So, um, yes and no. Um, the, the situation you described is something we try to avoid as much as possible, only for one reason. Um, we don't want students to self-advise. And the example I'll share is, I would not want you to come in and say, I'm gonna take this, this, and this because my so-and-so's, so-and-so's, so-and-so helped me figure out that if I wanna to go to Michigan State, this is what I need. Um, we have advisors, we've got people who already know what those things are. We have agreements on paper that we can access and see that. Um, and if there's a mistake made, we wanna be responsible for it. We don't want that burden to go to you. Um, so we, we try as hard as possible to not have students self-advise, as we refer to it. Um, and we ask those questions very early on. Um, we'll say at orientation, for example, um, what are you going to major in and do you want to transfer? And if a student says, I want to major in business and I want to transfer to Michigan State, um, and I just keep referencing MSU because they're right down the street from us and we always get that question, um, we'll start working with that student right away on day one to make sure we know what they're going to take is going to be transferable for them. Um, we don't want those students to um, take their own classes and look at, you know, those things themselves. That way we can make notes of it in their account and say, you know, I met with Gwen today. We discussed a transfer pathway to MSU. I recommended, you know, Bio 120, Psych 200, whatever it might be. Then if we fast forward a year or two and there's an error, that's on us, not on you. Um, when we you never say want... that's on us, because I saw that that's why I did it myself. Do you know how many people I saw when I went to school? Like I said, it was a long time ago, coming out of the advisor's office in tears because they thought they were about to graduate. And it's like, no, this isn't often until the fall. So instead of graduating in the spring, they had to go another semester. And oh, sure. so when you say it's on us, if there was a miscalculation, what would you do? Well, um, that is not something I would personally be involved in, unfortunately. Um, so I know we have had um, issues in the past where um, we've been able to find um, in a prior course catalog or a, um, you know, a program plan, a substitute course that has fit for some students. Um, you know, let's say the degree plan says bio 120 and you took 121, for example. Um, you know, there's certain situations like that. Um, but we have an electronic system called DegreeWorks um, that a student at any point can go on, log in by themselves or with an advisor, and DegreeWorks will say at the very top, your major is this, um, you know, and uh, show a list of their current, current courses. 
it will show, I think it's green if you've already taken it and completed like a section. Um, and then the red ones are outstanding. So a student at any point can go in and see that and say, okay, I know if I'm gonna major in business, I'm missing this course, this one, and this one. The other great thing about DegreeWorks, yeah, the other great thing in DegreeWorks is there's a what if button. And, you know, I know this is crazy to think, but college students always change their major. Today, they wanna go into business. Tomorrow, they wanna go into chemistry. The day after, they wanna go into physical therapy, whatever it might be. Um, so you can go in and you can hit what if, and it will show you what if I changed my major, how would that affect my, my degree path? So um, it might show you if you're majoring in business that you have three classes left and it will highlight for you what those are. If you hit what if and then select chemistry or select you know, nursing or whatever it might be, it will change all of that around for you and show you now you have this many classes left to take. Or maybe you only have one or two classes instead of three or four. Um, so it gives the students the ability to change that without really changing their major, just to kind of go out and see like, you know, what, what if I did do that? Um, you know, what if I did change my major? So um, yeah, you know, I will say, um, you know, uh, I don't think anyone is perfect um, and I'm sure mistakes have happened, but our academic advising team, um, I would stand behind them a hundred times out of a hundred and that they know uh, what the agreements are and what transfers where, and they do a really great job of working with, um, you know, all kinds of different schools. Um, we have a new partnership with Michigan State called Envision Green, where we have MSU academic advisors on our campus working with students as early as their first semester at the community college to get them ready for what they're gonna need to transfer to MSU. So they're already in contact with MSU during their first semester with us. Um, and that's been a, a, a great uh, program. We've had some workshops on it. Um, unfortunately, we kind of got um, stuck uh, going home right when the momentum was really building with Envision Green. Um, but our two college presidents, Dr. Robinson from LCC and um, Dr. Stanley from MSU recently met. Um, they signed some enhancements to that partnership. Um, and we're really doing our best to make sure a student knows almost immediately uh, in their first semester, first couple of weeks of the semester, if your ultimate goal is MSU, here's what we're gonna do. Um, and by having those agreements in place, it kind of eliminates the what if for students of wondering, you know, what do I have to get to, you know, get admitted here and so on. Um, so uh, we've really taken that next step to make sure um, that the students are also aware that as a community college, we're not just caring about what you're doing right now and with us, we're helping you get ready for whatever that next step is. MSU, U of M, Central, Grand Valley, whatever it might be, um, you can start with us. Um, one of our campaign models a couple of years ago was start here and get there. And there could be wherever you want it to be, whether it's a job um, or uh, moving on to a new, um, a new uh, school, college or university. Um, but circling back to the handbook thing, um, there is, um, do I have the ability to share screen here so I can look at an LCC webpage? Yes, you do. Real quick? Okay, yes, cool. Okay, I'm gonna pull up the LCC website here. So I think that should be on the screen now. Yes. So, um, what you were referencing in terms of a handbook, I can show you quickly and I'll, I'll circle back to this, but if you were to go to our academics and degrees and programs here, you can sort by any one of these. Um, I'm just gonna go to, uh, let's see, biology, for example. And as we scroll down a little bit, here is our AS in biology. AS is an associate of science in biology. Every one of our programs has this degree curriculum online. Um, so a student could pull this up today and say, okay, this piece of paper I'm looking at is valid through the summer of 2025. If I started now and I went for a year, I went for two years, I took some time off, I did whatever I did, um, I could come back in the summer of 2024 and this paper that I'm looking at is still valid for another year. Um, so every one of our degree and certificates is online. Um, it gives a good description of what it is, um, any additional information uh, in terms of minimum grades or certain electives. Um, here's a good example. I'll be real honest. My yeah. concerns are 100% met. You have an electronic 
uh, handbook, everything that they need to know about their degree, they can get online. And you know, when I was so long ago, it was a handbook and now it's online and there's no room really for error. The advisor can see it, the student can see it. So I am 100% assured, thank you. Cool, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I was just gonna say to you too, um, that whole, you can only take a certain class in a certain semester is also listed on a lot of these. Um, when I was an undergrad, uh, my undergrad major was communication and one course, which everyone just, as soon as you said the words research methods, you were like shaking, like, oh no, I have to take research methods to pass. Um, it was only offered in the fall. And, you know, there could be 30 seats in that class and 60 comm majors. How are we going to get, you know, all of that? So eventually they started splitting it up. Um, but that was a big burden for a lot of people. You know, what if I bombed it? Do I have to stay in school for another year just to take that one class? Um, but we do a pretty good job of um, note, noting those on here. Um, contact information is listed. And that's important because if I meet with a student and they say, I'm interested in studying biology, but I want to know um, specifically what will I do in uh, Bio 128? Tell me exactly what I'll do in that class. Um, that's not my role, that's more of a faculty advisor role, um, but students can find that contact information for the program uh, here and call someone in the department and ask about specific classes and things like that. Um, and just to go through this one quickly, um, it'll list for you what is out there. Um, so for this one, uh, for example, you do have to take some gen ed MTA courses. Um, you can see English, you have an area to select one, um, English or com. Uh, a couple more options, a humanity and fine arts sections, math, natural sciences, social, excuse me, social sciences. Um, and then we come down to the program of study requirements. So all of these courses here are required for this degree. Sometimes we have courses that are different between credit hours and billing hours. Um, the difference being um, maybe you're going to get a lab kit or you're going to get some supplemental materials from the instructor or you're going to use a lot of um, just stuff, uh, you know, bio related stuff that's going to be yours specifically throughout the semester. Um, that might be where you see a difference. So I always say you earn four here, but you're paying for six and that uh, those additional billing hours again cover whatever the supplemental material, supplies, lab stuff, all that stuff could be. Um, the elective area, students have choice. Um, so for this one, for example, um, let me move my screen here, um, select courses to reach the minimum of 60. So if a student took uh, some of the other coursework and they only had eight credits left, they could pick eight credits out of here. If they only had four left, they could pick four out of here. Um, to give them a little freedom in knowing that any one of those courses, if, for example, you're more interested in botany than you are genetics, you can make that choice yourself. Uh, we have the total. So students know um, how many courses are required for that specific degree or program. Um, and then we also sequence it so they can kind of see a layout of what is suggested for them. Um, this is not by any means, some students look at this and go, oh man, I got to take this, this, and this, and the, you know, you don't have to take those courses in that semester, but a lot of them are sequenced in a way that you can't take math 20, or excuse me, you can't take math 122 until you've completed math 21. Uh, same with chemistry 161 before 162, things like that. Um, somebody may look at this and say, okay, I'm going to also take bio 127 in my first semester. Um, and the ability to create their own schedule, again, that's where academic advising will come in. Um, a lot of times with subjects like biology, um, chemistry, some of the more intense physics, things like that, an advisor might say to them, you know, you're already taken a writing class, you've got Chem 151, 161, Math 121, that's already a heavy load for the semester, uh, but just have those conversations before the student were to go out and do that. Um, but what's nice about the sequencing is, again, that a student can look at it and, and kind of have an idea of, okay, I'm going to start here and I need to get here. How am I going to get there? What's my path going to look like? Um, so all of these are online um, for every one of our degrees. Um, again, I just, I picked biology here, but 
you know, you can go in. Some of them, for example, um, construction management, we have um, both some certificate program, uh, a CA, a certificate of achievement, as well as an associates of applied science. So when we look at the construction certificate, it's gonna be significantly shorter. Um, so now this one, scrolling down is only 36 to 38 credits um, versus all of the associate degrees are at least 60. Some of them are 61, 62, uh, but all of them are at least at that 60 threshold. So here a student can look at this and say, okay, I'm jumping right into the stuff I like, um, construction, building, safety, uh, things like that without having to take uh, those gen ed core courses um, for students who are interested in um, the associate program versus the certificate. Um, so again, they're all out here. Um, is there any other question? Oh, I do see something in the chat here, just a sec. Is there a maximum number of college credits that will transfer to a university? I, I don't believe so, but I know a lot of times universities will have their own requirement of how many of their courses you have to take to graduate from them. So a student might attend LCC and earn 90 transferable credits, but um, a previous university I worked for, you had to take at least, I think it was 60 of your 120 credits with them. So you might be able to transfer all of them, but you still might have to take X number of credits at that university. Okay, Oakland University. Uh, yeah. So. Um, it's gonna differ school to school. Um, I know that some of them, uh, like some of the programs that are university center, there's upwards of 90 that they'll accept. Um, and I would assume every school you look up may have a different number, um, but I generally touch on the 56 to 65 is kind of the sweet spot for someone to transfer after two years um, and uh, jump into junior status at whatever that next college or university might be for them. Um, just to kind of go over a couple things um, for a student that might be interested in getting started at LCC. Um, again, back to our website, lcc.edu. Um, as you scroll down a little bit, um, the first thing I always encourage is if a student's information, uh, excuse me, interested in learning more, you can click this little info button right here. Um, one thing my team does every Thursday, we're live on Zoom from two to three. Anybody can just pop in, ask us a question, um, ask us to show them something on the website, um, you know, hop in and say, hey, I got a weird letter from the school. Can you look at this for me um, to give that opportunity? So students can at any point click on that um, Thursdays from two to three. Uh, but we have this info um, page set up where a student can go out and submit their information. Um, and every Monday, my team will collect these and we'll sort them out. And um, the first thing we do is send a student a text message, assuming they click yes here. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a student engagement coordinator at LCC. Here's what I can help you with related to getting started. Um, do you wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one to go through the admissions process and talk about um, getting started um, or any specific questions you have? Um, the reason we include texting now is because we have learned uh, with students in general, uh, we can call you, you won't answer. We can email you, you won't reply. But if we text you, we'll get a response back in 30 seconds probably. Um, so texting has been very popular for us. Um, my team, we all have college issued cell phones. All of the success coaches have college issued cell phones. Um, and it's just the way we can communicate, you know, whatever platform we need to reach out to you uh, is what we're going to try to do. So a student can fill this out um, and just kind of start the conversation with myself or one of my three colleagues at any time. Um, all of our uh, process stuff um, is right here on the getting started page. So when a, a student clicks getting started, First of all, it'll give you uh, contact information for my department and my team. A lot of this is Q&A. Um, what kind of courses should I take? How can I afford it? What if I don't wanna do online classes? Things like that. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna get right to how do you get started here. Um, this overview talks about the start here, get there and general transfer programs. Um, we have uh, an in-district and an in-state rate 
So students are in district if they live in one of the greater uh, Lansing area public school districts. Anyone else in the state of Michigan is in state. Um, this cost right here that's highlighted is uh, based on this year's rate, what the cost of a two year degree is um, here versus, uh, excuse me, in district versus in state. Um, and that's for a total of 60 credit hours is what's that, what um, that is based on. Over here, we've got a bunch of different um, curriculum links. Um, one of them, for example, is the Transfer Studies AS. Um, a student can come to us and just major in Transfer Studies. Um, they can take all transferable courses and earn an AS, which is an Associate in Science, in Transfer Studies. And they're just going to look at all of these different um, MTA and different core area classes. They can work with an advisor to figure out how many of these they can take. They can find some electives within the ANA, AA and AS um, elective guide, and they can just take all courses that are going to get them to the next place. Maybe they have no idea what they want to major in now, and that's fine. Um, this is just something that can help them take those classes without being tied to a biology, a chemistry, something like that, um, but still transfer on to that next level. Um, as we scroll a little bit further, um, there's five different areas depending on what type of student we have looking to apply and get started. Um, let's just say, for example, it's a first time college student. Um, first and foremost, apply to the college. Um, you can click apply now here or on the little pencil arrow over here on the side. Um, the one thing I always note about the uh, application process is a student should know their social security number because that's a requirement on the application and it's not a screen that will allow you to move forward. So if you don't have your social number handy, um, you can save your application and come back to it. Um, but I always just encourage students to um, have that available uh, when they go out and do it. Shortly after applying, a student will get um, either an email or a letter in the mail from us saying, congratulations, you've been accepted. Here is your student number. Here's what you should do next. Um, that next part is activating your online account. You set your password to your LCC account so that you can go in and access your LCC email, look at your financial aid, things like that. And step three is where we determine what you're going to do in your first semester, um, and that's via your assessment levels. Um, every student that applies to LCC gets in, but not every student starts at the same place academically. Um, so we've moved to a mixed method of um, placement uh, assessment. A student can submit their ACT or SAT score to us, as well as their high school transcript if they're at the halfway point of their senior year uh, to determine what their placement levels are, and those would be for reading, writing, and math. Um, you can do any combination of those. You can submit your SAT scores and get fives. You can submit your transcript and get a six, um, as well as you can register to take the test online and maybe get sevens or eights. Um, whatever your high score is, is what stays. So if you took the test and got fours, but then you sent us your transcript and on paper it shows us that you've earned a five, um, you get a five. So no matter what, um, your highest score is, is how you stay with those, uh, those placement levels. There's a chart um, here um, on the placement levels website. Now that I say that, let me make sure I can find it. Under cut scores and placement levels, um, that kind of gives an indication of what a student um, can get from, uh, let's see, um, I think this is the, what am I looking at here? Is this the SAT? No, hold on. Somewhere on here, I should have pulled this up first, sorry. Um, I know there's a, oh yeah, review all the ways to get, here's what I'm looking for. So this is the equivalency chart. So the easiest way I look at this is I say, what's your high school GPA? Oh, it's 2.8, okay. Immediately, I know a 2.8 or above, you're going to get a reading five and a writing six, which is considered college ready. Um, maybe you got a little bit below that, but your SAT or your ACT is uh, a little bit on the higher side, you're still going to get that. So this chart looks through every area of the ACT, SAT, um, GED, CLEP scores, all that stuff is on here. And then math is just a little bit different. Um, so math, 
we can use your high school GPA. Um, but uh, a lot of times to jump more into the college ready classes, it would come off of the SAT or ACT score. So um, all of this is done through um, assessment and our placement testing office. Um, students can schedule those online right now, um, but I always reference this chart um, as just a good way for a student to be able to look at it and kind of know ahead of time um, where they might be. Um, our academic advisors work with testing a lot because they might be able to look at this and say, you know what, if you um, really did have a 2.8, like you said you did, you could submit that and up your reading and writing to five and six. Why is that important? Because now you're not going to take a developmental writing course. Um, you're going to jump right into the college ready course. Um, and then sometimes it saves students from taking extra classes that they may not need. Um, so uh, that's a great way of um, having that out there for someone to, uh, to, to go through at any time. Once you've established placement levels, um, you've now activated your account, you have a password to be able to log in and out, you've got uh, placement levels, what's your pathway? Um, maybe you come in and you say business all the way, chemistry all the way, or you say, I have no idea, I'm just here to be here. Um, we have some interest assessments you can take that look at, um, you know, different uh, careers and programs that may be of interest to you. Essentially, that just means um, how do you uh, select your major. Orientation is next. Um, orientation is fully online, and um, we've got all kinds of different sessions on orientation to allow students to learn more about the college, um, learn about specific uh, do's and don'ts, for example, what is Title IX, uh, what are some of these important things that I'm gonna hear about uh, maybe when I'm on campus. Um, and if we were in person, orientation is where um, kind of we have a handoff from an engagement coordinator, myself, to a success coach. Um, so when we were doing in-person orientations, the last step of orientation is that we register for classes. Um, so we help students register. But during that registration period, we have success coaches come in and they might walk up to you and introduce themselves and say, hey, I'm uh, John, I'm your success, success coach, just to kind of break the ice a little bit and let you know on day one, hey, I'm here. Um, you haven't even started yet, technically, you're still at orientation. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm here, I can help you. Here's what we can do together. Um, so right now, all of our orientation sessions are in D2L, which is our online learning platform. Um, and the college is working on a uh, reopening plan um, that day by day, we're just kind of monitoring different safety data to figure out when we're gonna uh, be fully operational again back on campus. So now you've applied, you've activated your account, you've got your assessment levels, uh, you have a major, you've finished orientation, now you get to register for classes. Um, in, red, uh, excuse me, in orientation, there's um, all, a whole module dedicated to how to register, what to do. There's also a registration guide that's provided as a PDF, so someone can save that and always go back, excuse me, and reference how to do specific things. Um, and then, um, again, in person, we have a bunch of people in the room. We pass out laptops to help students actually do this. Um, but right now in this environment, um, we just have uh, virtual appointments available or students can email, call, text, whatever, um, and we can help them um, with that registration process. Um, depending on when a student applies, um, we have, um, a scholarship program that um, is available um, through our foundation office. Um, our scholarship program is open from November 1st through January 31st. So for students who are attending next fall, um, that program has already closed. Um, it's a short five uh, open end answer questions all about what's your career gonna be? What do you wanna study? what's been important to you, what kind of obstacles have you overcome, what kind of extracurriculars are you involved in, all that good stuff. Um, and then people like me at the college are on a review committee and we go out and we read these applications and we score them for scholarships. Um, some scholarships are um, available um, through specific departments, programs. Uh, many of them are donor-based, meaning I'm a donor to the college, 
I can select that I want my money to go to a first generation student who's Pell eligible, who has a uh, math major, for example, or things like that. Um, so we've got a variety of different um, scholarship opportunities, as well as students file their FAFSA. They might be Pell eligible, they might be TIP eligible, they might have some kind of scholarship from the high school, from the church, from the community organization, whatever it might be. And all of those kind of work together um, to create uh, whatever their financial aid packages for the next academic year. Um, all of this application material related to the scholarship program um, is unfortunately not applicable right now, but it's all there for sure. Um, and it just walks students through how to go out and apply what to do, um, what the questions are that we ask, that kind of thing. So um, I always encourage students um, by the simple fact that it's free to apply and it's free to apply for scholarships. So, you know, you may have had your heart set on going to ABC college since you were 10 years old, um, but you may apply to LCC, you may apply for the scholarship program, and you may get a letter in the mail from Dr. Steve Robinson that says, uh, congratulations, uh, we're giving you the President's Award. Um, <laughs> you know, in a nutshell, you're not paying for anything for two years. So um, that may significantly change where you wanna go next year. Um, so I always encourage students to do that, um, but also to look at, you know, not just from LCC, but any anywhere you apply and you look at um, financial aid awards, dig into the percentage of what's covered. And what I mean by that is we may offer a student a thousand dollar scholarship and they may just, you know, push it to the side and say, well, you know, the other school offered me 5,000. Well, if we offered you 1,000 and it only cost you 2,000 to go here, but they offered you five and it cost 25 to go there, um, look at the percentages of what's covered and really kind of dig into how much is still left and, you know, how that's all covered. So, um, you know, we've got a financial aid staff that's really great about meeting with um, parents and students to really uh, you know, uh, lay out some numbers and kind of figure out how this is going to work for them. Um, and, you know, each each family is different. You know, I always tell people that I, I can't look at you on paper and say, you're going to get this, this, and this. It's a very complex system of, uh, you know, numbers and family members and how many people are in college, how many people are in the household, all that, all that stuff goes into your financial aid. So it's, um, it's something that you, uh, you definitely just um, want to work with us on and, and you know, get your FAFSA filed and, and kind of see where it goes from there. So at this point, a student would have applied, gotten through all of that stuff. They're registered for their first semester. Now is kind of the point where the academic success coach comes in and says, okay, you're registered, how can I help you? Um, some, some things like, do you know where to go physically on our campus if we were there? Um, do you know how to navigate our website? Do you know how to log into Banner and look at your financial aid or check your student email or go into D2L and see where your um, instructor posted the class notes or the lecture notes or whatever? Um, and that's really where they come in and kind of take over and be that person's person um, throughout the rest of their time um, and really get them on that right track uh to you know whether it's uh earn that credential and get a job or earn that credential and move on to um to a larger uh four-year college or university so um you know i always encourage everyone to check us out um we've got awesome programs um, we've got all kinds of high-tech equipment and state-of-the-art facilities um, but i think more important than all of that is we just have so, a, a tremendous group of people that work uh, and really care about students. And we really wanna see them do well and succeed. Um, and we always say that you're a student uh, perhaps only once or twice with us, but you're always a student. You know, we always have students uh, call back, ask for help, look at, you know, references, things like that. Um, so um, we just have people that care about students. And I think that's, that's what it boils down to. Do you guys have any, um, specific questions or maybe anything else you want me to uh, talk about on our end? Uh, Michael, do you have uh, dormitories? We do not. Okay. Um, we do not have any um, official housing on campus. We have a, um, let me see here. Oops. 
um, campus life and we have a student student housing. Uh, we have an off campus housing website um, and this is where local um, uh, housing companies, apartment complexes, landlords, whoever um, will um, post places. Um, a lot of people ask that question. And one thing I tell them is um, the beauty of where we are is that we're right down the street from MSU and there's literally apartments everywhere in East Lansing um, and e even Lansing, for example. Um, in addition to having all of those apartments, um, you know, there's always um, people who sign up early and then don't attend. So there's always subleasing and things like that. But a student can go on this website, put in a price range, put in a, uh, you know, preference in terms of uh, location, bedroom, whatever. Um, and I always say it's kind of like online dating and they'll match you up with someone who maybe needs a roommate who matches your profile or um, pair you up with someone who um, is like-minded in terms of, um, uh, you know, social scene and, you know, you prefer a quiet environment and you like this and things like that um, for some of our students who maybe aren't from the Lansing area um, that are looking to come here. But um, I, I would never have a concern that a student couldn't find a place up here. Um, I would just encourage them to um, not just jump into something and maybe ask me or ask someone else, hey, uh, you know, looking at this, for example, I'm looking at a place on Pine and Shiawassee, what's that area like, you know, and have those conversations about, um, you know, where you're going to live and what, what the neighborhood is like. And, uh, you know, I might not be familiar with that area. Um, I personally live in East Lansing, not Lansing, um, but, you know, I have colleagues that maybe live somewhere over there and they can tell you what the, what the neighborhood is like. And um, all just to make sure, you know, we don't have students that, you know, just jump online and jump at the first apartment they can find and, and then realize, um, I think, uh, what's one of them? I think there's one called Campus View or Campus campus, I think it's campus view apartments. And it's literally one of the furthest complexes away from either our campus or MSU. So on name alone, someone might go out there and go, oh, campus view. Yeah, that'll be great. I'll be right by campus. And they're, it's like 10 miles away. So, you know, we're, we're always open to having those conversations just to make sure our students make, uh, you know, a good choice um, and something that they'll be happy with when they're up here. The other good thing is a lot of the complexes have a bus service that runs through the complex to MSU through East Lansing down to Lansing. So students can get a bus pass um, that will allow them to go from most areas um, and just hop on a bus and go to MSU, go to East Lansing, uh, come downtown, go to LCC. Um, uh, all, I think it's like 40 bucks a semester or something. So it's um, pretty inexpensive as well. Um, so there's always places to stay. Um, and again, you know, it's all going to just be uh, preference and, um, of course, you know, financial uh, capability as well. Do you guys have any questions? Gwen, Rosanna? No, no questions for me. Thank you. Great presentation, Michael. I really okay. like how your student services department really doesn't let a student get lost when they enroll in your program? We, we really try not to. Um, you know, it's um, ultimately it's always up to the student, right? right? So if, um, you know, for example, if you come in and I meet you at orientation and I'm your success coach, um, you may be really interested in working with me because you want the help and you're excited about starting. The person next to you may never respond to their coach, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, or we have some students who work with their coach, you know, when we were in person, we'd see them a couple times a week, every other day, maybe. Um, and then we have some people who maybe email back and forth with their coach once a semester. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, they, they really do a great job. Um, you know, we've, we've got all kinds of different resources. Um, the other thing I'll encourage is if anyone ever wants to go out to the LCC Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash LCC stars. Um, I started a thing back in August where every Wednesday 
you can watch me tonight if you want. Um, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. I do a live meeting with someone from campus, um, whether it's a success coach, a financial aid advisor, and so on. Um, tonight, I'll be interviewing um, the lead faculty from our child development program. And also I'll have a outreach coordinator from our health and human services division. And I'll have three current dental hygiene students on with me. Um, and what we've been doing with that is just kind of getting the word out there about services, programs, academic stuff. Um, we, a couple of weeks ago, went and did a tour of our newly renovated technology and learning center building. It's amazing. Um, you know, I've had uh, our building trades person on there. I had someone from geospatial sciences. Um, we've had success coaches. We've had financial aid advisors. I've had the president of the college on. Um, we've had all kinds of different things and we're just trying to use whatever platform we can and know that, you know, a lot of times if you're sitting there and you got your phone in your hand and you're like, oh, the college is live on Facebook. Let me check this out. Um, you know, just to bring that out there um, for students. So, uh, well, real quick, let me look. Um, yeah, I had uh, someone from the police department. We did three weeks dedicated to career and technical education. Um, I had someone from career and employment services talk about our job fairs. Um, we talked about our utility line worker program. Um, I mentioned tonight's. Um, in a couple of weeks, we have uh, faculty from our medical insurance billing and coding programs. Um, on April 21st, um, the counseling and um, uh, student compliance office are gonna be online doing a presentation about uh, drug awareness for students. Um, and then one that I'm really excited about at the end of May, um, we're gonna have two faculty from our American Sign Language program um, not only answering questions about what the program is and how great it is, um, but we're also going to have someone interpreting the whole thing live. So we're trying to just do a lot of fun stuff with Facebook, knowing that the audience is typically already there. Um, but the other great thing is all those videos stay out there. So you could go out there right now to our um, official LCC Facebook page, uh, go to photo or go to videos, and you could see almost all the interviews I've done in the past. So you could find one related to financial aid or find one related to uh, building construction, for example. Um, and all of those stay out there. So students can look at them and um, you know, be able to uh, circle back to it um, as a um, reference point or um, a counselor can look it up and you know, encourage a student to check it out. Um, so we have a, a, a lot of that information out there um, and available to students. And again, we're just trying to find creative ways of making that communication. You know, um, we're uh, primarily all remote still. Um, we have some in-person operation, mostly with our um, tech careers and healthcare and things like that. Um, but we're all primarily still online. Um, and I think the biggest uh, thing to mention is that you know, being remote doesn't stop anything. We still have all of our student services functioning and all full steam ahead. Um, so, you know, whatever we could do on campus, we can still do remotely. Uh, we just can't do it physically in person. Yeah, yeah, good deal. Do you offer though, under normal conditions, um, classes online? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Um, we've got, uh... oh, hold on just a second. Sorry, um, we've got, um, I'll say a handful, it's probably in the neighborhood of a dozen maybe programs okay. that even if we went back a year and a half could still be completed all online. Okay. Um, obviously all of that changed and who knows how much of that will, will still continue. Um, but yes, we have programs you know, that students can complete fully online as well as Traditionally, we offer courses in um, the online and the in-person format. Um, we might have you know, a section of, let's say, English 121 that uh, you know, a thousand people might need a semester. Uh, we may have 25 online sections and 40 in-person sections. Um, I don't know how that dynamic's gonna change, um, but yes, we do have online and in-person. Um, but we also have, um, in addition to online, now we also have online real time. So um, and, and, uh, the, the biggest difference is an online class means you log into D2L, 
um, you see your material posted, you have certain benchmarks, meaning read this by Monday, answer this by Tuesday, do the discussion board when by Wednesday, do all these things throughout the week. Whereas an online real-time class means we're online, you are accessing this from home um, via whatever service you're in, but you have to be in front of the computer Monday and Wednesday from one to three, mm -hmm. um, or you know Tuesday and Thursday from seven to 10 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is a lot of people still need that structure. They still need that schedule mm -hmm. um, versus just saying, okay, all your materials online, go get it, mm -hmm. you know, get after it. So um, yes, we do. And there's, um, yeah, I wanna say it's like a dozen of them are available uh, regularly fully online. Good deal. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Michael, for your yeah. time. Excellent. You're welcome. And um, thank you guys for joining. And I know this is going to be some great information for our students to, you know, be able to research and uh, look into and check it out. Um, thanks again, everybody. Yep, you're welcome. And I'll um, I'll email you this afternoon, just kind of a recap of maybe the getting started page and um, feel free to give my information to anyone. Um, call, email, text, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm here to help. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Go Have Tigers. A great Have a great day. Stay <laughs> safe. Day. Go Tigers. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Bye now.